This week, there are new games getting verified status. There are updates to various community tools as well as the deck itself, which continue to improve the overall gaming experience. Plus, Valve forgot to mention they finally fixed this huge oversight for your library. We're going to talk about all of it. That's right, it's Steam Deck news time. I'm apologizing right up front, this isn't my normal format. Uh, I've had nothing but issues with audio and video today. I'm very excited about Retro Deck, so I'm just doing an audio version. First up, are there any Amiga fans out there? Well, there's some good news for you because Zool Redimensioned just became Steam Deck Verified. Quote, Hey everyone, we wanted to let you know that your favorite retro platforming ninja from the nth dimension has been certified verified for the Steam Deck. What this means is that Zool Redimensioned will run on the Steam Deck without drops in performance or technical issues. So if you like to game on the go, you can play Zool Redimensioned safe in the knowledge that you'll have the same awesome experience as you do when playing on desktop. This is good news for folks who love the action platforming of the Amiga mascot. The pixel art here is beautiful, and I am excited to give this a spin on my deck. Next up, Retro Deck is one of the many ways that makes emulation a cinch on your deck. If you haven't tried it before, installation is a breeze. The UI is gorgeous, and it's customizable, and it comes pre-configured with many of the most popular emulators. This latest build of Retro Deck, version 0.7.1b, has a bunch of awesome features that make retro gaming and game preservation that much easier. This new version enhances compression support so that you can save precious disk space. They've added a new controller layout that unifies hotkeys for all emulators where possible. Simu is now a supported emulator, bringing Wii U emulation to Retro Deck. There's a new global preset for swapping A, B, and X, Y buttons to mirror Nintendo layouts in Nintendo emulators. There's now an auto-update function that will upgrade Retro Deck at startup. They've added a semi-automated RPCS3 firmware installer, and there were many other improvements as well. The full changelog can be found below. Decky Loader 2.10.0 is out now with a spate of features to make the tool more accessible to all. Decky Loader has been translated into Albanian, Simplified Chinese, Traditional Chinese, French, German, Italian, Greek, and Spanish. But they've also added a bunch of other interesting things. There's now an Update All Plugins button, which is a huge deal if you've ever had to update all of your plugins at once. You can now hide plugins from the Quick Access menu, which is pretty exciting. This means that not all plugins have to reside in the Quick Access menu, which is a really great thing. And there's also a bunch of smaller fixes as well. So what do you think? Do you use Decky Loader? What's your favorite plugin for Steam Deck? Sound off in the comments below. And while you're down there, why not like that smash button? It's the best way to tell YouTube that you want to see more videos just like this. You can also check out my second channel, Gardner Bryant Shorts. There's going to be a link on the screen up here. And if it's not there, it's because I forgot. So make sure you let me know in the comments. Now, I want to thank Systrom for his continued support of the work that I'm doing here. It's because of Systrom and the other folks that support the show that I'm able to keep the lights on here. It's all greatly appreciated. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to support the show, you can use the links below to pledge your support. Or if you enjoy the look of any of these shirts, you can pick one up. It supports the show as well. Head over to store.heavyelement.io to take a look. Next up, if you're looking for some exciting upcoming indie games, it behooves you to check out Steam Next Fest, which runs through next Thursday. There are hundreds of free demos for unreleased games. These demos are for upcoming indie releases, and two have really caught my eye here. Galacticare, which is a space-based theme hospital-looking sim, and Arc Racer, which looks like a Wipeout or F-Zero, maybe. Two of my favorite racing games. Now, Steam Next Fest is Valve's way of celebrating upcoming indie games and getting the word out about them. This runs once a quarter, and it's a really fun time for everybody involved. So last week, we covered the Steam Deck's massive stable channel update. But one feature that the team forgot to mention in their changelog was pretty big. As Valve's Steam Deck frontman pierre Lou Griffet explained on Twitter, quote, Linux change we forgot to call out in the new client, removing non-Steam apps now properly removes all related files like shader caches and compatibility data, which would previously be left as other storage space. So what does this mean? Well. When you play a game, if it's a title in your library or a non-Steam game that you've added, Steam will pull in or cache assets to support it. This can be compatibility tools like Proton or the Steam Linux runtime, or it can be shaders that are compiled in the game. When you uninstall a game from your Steam library, it will delete all of those cache shaders and compatibility files. 
Previous to the last update though, when you would remove a non-Steam game, Steam wouldn't actually delete those cached files. Valve has finally fixed this issue with last week's massive stable update. Now, when you remove a non-Steam game, it will clean up all these excess files, and that's pretty awesome. And speaking of updates, as is tradition around here, we close out the Steam Deck news talking about the new changes and features for Steam. And since last week, there have been six, count them, six beta updates and a stable channel update. So we're gonna touch on everything that happened. Last Thursday, Valve fixed some multiplayer issues with games that use Steam networking, and they also fixed a bug which prevented multiple DualShock 4 controllers from being connected at the same time, plus a few other things. Then, on Friday, they fixed a potential crash when a window is created in desktop mode. On Monday, they fixed an issue where DualSense controllers would not properly work when hot plugged. On Tuesday, they fixed an issue with inviting new players to your game. They fixed the UI when comparing your friend's achievements to your own, and they fixed the UI not working properly when sharing screenshots. On Wednesday, they fixed an issue where the main menu and quick access menu would not render properly after entering a pin on the lock screen. And on Wednesday, Valve released a new stable client update that incorporated the two previous beta fixes. All in all, yet another tremendous week for Steam Deck upgrades and news. What do you think about any of the stories we covered in this video? Did we miss any? Leave me a comment and let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But that's all the Steam Deck news I could find this week. I want to shout out my friends on Patreon, my YouTube members, and our ViewSync Premium members who make what we do here a reality. If you believe in the work that I'm doing, you can use the links below to show your support. That's going to do it for now, though. Thank you for spending your time with me here today, and I'll see you guys in the next one.